Hi, welcome to my webinar on placements, the great unknown with doTERRA. I'm going to do a quick, brief presentation on how you do placements and a little bit of an overview of how you plan for rank with doTERRA. And again, this is for my team here in Canada, Team Pure Life, under my company Pure Life Balance. If you have any questions, by all means, you're just going to post it on the Facebook group when I post the video. But hopefully I can answer all your questions as we go through this quick webinar. So placements, the great unknown. How do we place people that we find to join our business? There are two kinds of placements. There's an enroller and there's a sponsor. The enroller gets the fast start if on LRP for and 20%. So the fast start is paid for their first 60 days. So I've been in the business for a year. I signed someone up and for their first 60 days, I will get 20% as the enroller. I can move the person in the first 14 days, and again, if they hit Premier in the first 90 days. Can count that person as a qualifying leg, and we're gonna talk about qualifying legs as we talk about rank advancement. So in order to consider that person a qualifying leg, you need to be the enroller. And as the enroller, you will receive the extra shares as you move up into silver and gold and platinum and so on. The other kind of placement um, is sponsor. They get the unit level, they count for the power of three and determines the actual location of the person. So sponsor, I'm gonna quickly show you a picture here. This is you. You are planning your organization. This is your level one, this is your level two, this is your level three. So if I place someone down lower in my organization, let's say here on my level three, this person will be the sponsor on the level two. So level one, level two, level three, level four, five, six, and seven. So that's how you start planning your organization. I'm going to talk about this a little bit later. The enroller, typically the closest upline or business builder, the personal contact of the upline sponsor, and you can give up enrollership one time in the life of a wellness advocate, this used to be called IPCs, for rank advancement. The sponsor, sponsor changes can be made one time within the first 14 days and again if the enrollee hits premier within 90 days. So the enroller you can only change one time and I would only recommend you giving up enrollership because remember as the enroller every person that you sign up you get 20% within their first 60 days. So if you give up the enrollership you are giving that up to whoever you give it to. But by giving up enrollership, if it helps you move up in rank, then it's worth it to give up enrollership. But when you're at that point debating whether to give up enrollership, you'll be well on your way and understand the compensation model. So I just want to show you here the enrollership and um, the sponsorship. So you're enrolling a new wellness advocate. So I'm logged into my back office here. I click on enroll a wellness advocate, English in Canada and continue. Always wholesale, you never want to set them up as a preferred member. It just doesn't make financial sense to set people up as preferred members. Click continue. You fill in all their information and you go down here. So I am enrolling this person. So I am going to set this person up as me as the enroller. So I'm just going to put in my number here, eight. And I'm going to decide, and I'm just looking for an IPC number here, where to put it in my organization. And I'm just going to pull up this one because this is a recent one that I did. That's where I'm going to place it in my organization. And then I click Verify ID. And there, that's where it tells me that I am the enroller and this person is the sponsor. Sorry, I'm just going to pause this here. My phone's ringing. The enroller is myself and Pamela is the sponsor. So that's somewhere in my organization that I'm putting her as a sponsor. But when I do this, I quickly send Pamela a quick email to say, hey, let you know I'm signing someone up. I'm placing them under you as the sponsor, just giving you a heads up. So this is where you would set those two up. So you can be the enroller of anybody, no matter where you place them in the organization. If I place them deep, deep, deep down here in my organization, I can still be the enroller but the person above would be their sponsor, and you just want to make sure you communicate that to that person that you're identifying them as a sponsor. So very important to know. So when you're signing someone up, you want to understand what are they going to be? Are they going to be a builder? Are they going to be a sharer? Or are they just going to be a customer? So a builder. He or she is going to commit to 100 PV LRP per month. 
They're going to share the oils and they're going to look for more builders because they want to start building their organization. They want to start building this structure. So they're active and they want to build. They share oils and look for more builders. They make two contacts a day. And by two contacts, what I mean is that you're talking to the oils about something with someone every day. I do this naturally now, and it's probably five contacts a day that I'm making, whether I'm saying, oh, you should try this for eczema or this for breathe or giving someone a sample or making a cold call, lots of contacts per day. Find three business builders, hold one class per week, and participate in the mentorship program. By the mentorship program, that's the value that you bring. How can you mentor people to bring the business? And myself, even as a mentor, whether through my 20 years in my corporate career or even now within the last year just building my doTERRA business, I can learn from every single person, from every single conversation I have. They can mentor me because we can always learn more, do more, and be better at what we do. So mentorship is key, but you got to pick the right people that you want to mentor as part of your million-dollar real estate. So these three lucky people that you're going to want to build a business with and have a long-term relationship with is who you're going to put here. Is your enrollee a sharer or are they likely to become a sharer? They're interested in sharing oils and commits to a class here and there. Usually has an LRP of, of 100 or more. Ask you for more samples for their family or friends. Sometimes say they don't want to sell but act like a builder in many ways. Interested in attending product training and sometimes stays for the business part. So this is what I would call a sharer. That you know what, they're in the healthy lifestyle, they like using the oils, and it's just very natural for them to talk about it. And a lot of times sharers become my builders because they realize that while I'm talking to everybody about it anyway, why don't I just sell it? It's just a natural progression. Is the person you're enrolling a customer? also called a consumer or a user. They do not want a minimum order per month. They're usually not interested in hosting a class, ask lots of questions about products, and they're interested in attending product trainings. So if this is this answer yes to these questions, then they're probably just a customer. So now, assess your sign up. How committed are they to being a builder? How capable are they? Do they get it or are they likely to? So if they're committed and capable, Frontline builder, absolutely. Put them on the front line as your builder. Are they either committed or capable? So not both, one or the other. They're usually a share, so put them on your level two or level three. Neither, I just want to use the oils, then lower down. They're obviously just a customer. So again, if they're committed and capable, front line, that's your builder, that's who you're going to mentor. And by front line, your level one, I mean your million dollar real estate here. If they're either one of those, committed or capable, usually a level two or level three as a share. So a level two or level three. So again, your level one, level two, maybe here, maybe put them in one of these spots because they may turn into a builder or just put them down here. And neither, they just want to use the oils. You put them as a customer. You always put them down here because by putting them down here, it helps these people all with their overall team volume, which helps you move up in rank. This is why when you place people, it's no good to have more than three people on your level one. The old network marketing um, compensation models, you wanted everybody on your level one because that's where you get paid more. This is the beauty about doTERRA. They encourage you to build a team environment, a team um, atmosphere, team building by, yeah, you know what, I'm going to enroll people, but I'm going to put them under deep in my organization, which will help you, help you, and help me. It really creates that team environment. One of the things I really, really love about doTERRA. The general rule, builders and sharers close to you, purchases or customers lower down. So builders and sharers close to you. Remember that, builders and sharers close to you. Builders here, sharers maybe around here or here customers down low. Very, very important. Why? Level one, you get paid 2%. Level seven, you get paid 7% after the fast start. So remember, you're paid 20% in the fast start for the first 60 days. After the fast start, you get paid unilevel, which the deeper they are in your organization, the higher the percentage. So that's why you're level seven down here. You get a higher percentage after the fast start. It makes more sense to put them deeper down in your organization. 
Communicate. If you're going to place a share under a builder or another share, call them first. So just like the example I showed you when I was setting up enrolling someone there. Let me pull that example here. I was the enroller and Pamela was a sponsor. I quickly sent Pamela a quick email saying, hey, enrolling this person in your organization, just want to give you a heads up. So communicate, communicate, communicate. Make sure they commit to support that placement. So if it's someone that could potentially be a sharer or builder and you're going to put them under someone and they're going to order on a monthly basis, make sure wherever you place them, you talk to that person. Are you committed to supporting this person? Are you going to follow up with them, ask questions? Are you going to provide them that support? If you're placing a sharer under a sharer, this is a great way to help a sharer become a builder. So I'll give you an example of this. So I had a builder here in my organization and I had a sharer here. Sharer being, the, you know what, they really love the oils, hosted the odd class, but wasn't sure that they wanted to become a builder. So what I did is I put another sharer underneath them to say, okay, well, you know what, here's another sharer. She wants to host the odd class, but you know what, maybe you can earn a little bit of money off her, so why not help maybe mentor her? Sooner rather than later, this person here became a builder because they saw how easy it was when I'd help put people underneath them to turn sharers into builders. Okay, let's see. <coughs> Moves. Sign the person up in the spot in which you think they belong. So, for example, I'm having a class. I sign someone up. I think they're just a customer. I'm going to put them here. I think they're a sharer, I'm going to put them there. I sign them up with the right sponsorship, that right in the wellness advocate form. So here, with the right sponsor ID, that I think at that time where I'm going to put them. Line them up on your front line, you may forget. So the approach that some people take is, you know what, I'm going to enter everybody in my class, put them all on my level one, and because I have 14 days to move them, I'll move them afterwards. I just don't like that approach because sometimes you'll forget. And then you only have the chance to move them once. So I place them where I think they're going to be based on my assessment of them. And then I move them later if I need to. Enrolling them at first all on your level one, you just may forget. So to move someone, look under the team tab in your back office. Eligible enrollees will appear in the sponsor changes section, and this is where you can change them. Or you can email placements at doTERRA as well too to move them. So I'm just going to show you in your back office here. So if you go to your back office and you go to your team tab and you click on graphical tree. Oh, sorry. No, sorry. I went to the wrong area there. You click on sponsor changes, click on sponsor changes. If you have anybody that you can move, they would be listed here. And then over here, you'd be able to click and say change sponsor, have the wellness advocate number of where you want to move them to in your organization, and you just type it in and click verify and confirm, and you move them. Remember though, you can only change the sponsorship, this placement of someone in your organization once. So be sure that that's what you want to do. And chain sponsor, again, remember, if I have someone down here, um, this is the sponsor, and I want to move them, whether down, up, across my organization, I move the person over here, this would now become the sponsor. So that's changing the placements in your organization. After six months of complete inactivity, no orders, no point redemption, no anything, a person can email placements at doTERRA.com and request to be moved. Their downline rolls up to the next level. It does not go with them to the new spot. So here's a lesson from doing a webinar. Shut off your phone. Sorry, guys. Um, I don't want to work with the person I first signed up under now. You know what? That happens. But what I encourage you is the beauty of this business is you learn your strengths, your weaknesses, and you learn how to work with different personalities. So I encourage you to work through any issues that you may have with people that you sign up because it only makes you a stronger, more powerful, influential person in the long run. Late moves. After six months of complete inactivity, no orders, no point redemption, no anything, a person can email placements at doTERRA and request to be moved. Their downline will roll up to the next level. It doesn't go with them in the new spot. Commit. Do not cross-recruit. 
in this org in this community and organization we know a lot of people and we share a lot of the same relationships if someone has already talked to someone about doTERRA don't try and sign them up and bring them as part of your team whoever was the first person that talked to them let them be honest be open be transparent and just don't cross recruit recruit it's just not a, a cool thing to do other options you can do when you're you build your business and let's say you get to a gold or diamond or platinum you can gift or sell your position once you get up where you're making five thousand a month you, a lot of people sell those positions when I was in Utah I had the pr privilege of meeting a lady who said she created diamonds and she created diamonds and then people would sell off their position and go create another one you can terminate your position and you can also do an exemption to placement policy which would go to a committee so that is the end of the actual placement. So just to recap, you want to make sure when you're signing someone up, are they a customer? If they're a customer, download deep in your organization. If they're a sharer, level two, level three. If they're a builder, level one, because those are the people that you are going to mentor. So that's a really quick, easy way to help evaluate the person you're signing up, where you want to place them in your organization. There's just a couple more things that I wanted to go over and I wanted to talk a little bit again about this edge planner. You can go to the edge success and download or purchase this planner and it's really, really good, but there's lots of templates out there that you can download. So as you start building your doTERRA business, which you know what we are, it's such an exciting opportunity we have here in Canada to build your team. Um, a very, very great opportunity we have. So I suggest though you want to plan and invest in structuring your organization right from the beginning. So who, this is you here, who is in this million dollar real estate? Who are your three builders? The people that you're going to text, talk to daily, weekly mentoring calls, accountability calls, monthly team meetings. You're constantly working together to build your organization, be creative with new events, new ways to bring new customers, break out into people. These is your senior leadership team, the people that you are investing. And then your senior leaders, who are their two people? So as they were to move up into here, who are the people they want to put in their real estate? Because you sometimes will have some communication with them as well too. So who are these? This is where sometimes the sharers start that will turn into a builder. And then all your other orders put down here. But you want to keep track of them because you want to follow up with them. You want to make sure they're on LRPs. You want to send out monthly incentives if they're not on LRP, how to get on LRP. Like there's lots of things you want to do to keep track of your customers. So I print out lots of copies of this and then just use this to keep track of my organization and plan and strategize and vision and meet with my senior leaders and again plan and strategize vision and goal setting, all that stuff. Same thing that I did in government for 20 years, but now I have the joys of doing it with a phenomenal business. And the last thing that I wanted to show you here was just in your back office to go to your dashboard. And this is another planner that is really, really good to help. This is qualifications here. If you go down here, if you go to consultant, this tells you what you need to be a consultant, $50 OV. To be a manager, you need 500 OV. And because this is filled out in all purple, that means I've already hit it. To be a director, you need 1,000 in OV. To be an executive, you need 2,000 in OV. To be elite, you need 3,000 in OV. To be premier is I need two legs to be executive. And so remember, if I go back to executive, executive was 2,000 in OV. So to hit premier, I have to have two people in my million dollar real estate who already hit executive. If I click qualified legs, tells me I actually have three people in my organization that already hit executive. Then to go to silver, three people have to hit elite. I hit qualified legs. It tells me the three people in my organization that hit elite. And then you can go all the way up to presidential diamond and which, hey, where I'm going here, guys, and I'm glad you guys are along with me for the ride because this is where I'm going, where I'm eventually going to have six platinums in my organization and an overall team volume of 5,000. And platinum again, if we go down to platinum, platinum is having three silvers in your organization. So this is a really good tool to help you plan. In addition to that, I encourage people on the build guide that you can print off share success. There's a really good rank advancement map that explains to you elite, explains to you premier, explains to you silver, explains to you gold, platinum, all what you need to hit those ranks. So no matter where you are at in your planning and building your business, and if you're going for elite, premier, silver, 
this is a really good rank advancement map on help you get there. And so let's say if you're planning to hit Premier, if you're planning to hit Silver, I'm going to show you another web page to go to. It's called Share Success, where you can download planners. I'm a big planner, strategizer. I like knowing where I want to go in six months, where I want to go in a year. And all of you who know me, my saying is always shoot for the moon because even if you miss, you're going to land amongst the stars. So set your goals high, plan high. But these are really good planners to use. So if you just click on the library there, and if you scroll down, here's the Elite Planner, here's the Premier Planner, the Silver Planner, and you just click Download, and you can download these planners. And whoever is your upline should be asking you to fill out these planners and send them to them on a monthly basis. And if they're properly mentoring you, they will be holding you accountable to fill out these planners and make sure that you are submitting them. Because we want to help you achieve rank. We want to help you achieve your goals, whether it's to pay for your oils or whether it's to replace your income. And by you filling out these planners on a monthly basis helps us achieve your goals. So really, really good um, planners to use here. And then that the rank guide that I was telling you about is in this build one. So this document here, which I'll just pull up. This build guide, this one here to help you plan. This is it here, the build on the share success. You can download it here, just download in English and you can download it and it helps you. So what I do in my home, I have, I know exactly where I want to go. I have my roadmap all the way up to that presidential diamond. That's a monthly income of 114000 a month with six platinum. So this is where I want to go. And I'm slowly building my organization to get there. So that is all I had. I gave you a quick overview of placements, a quick overview of the back office, how to plan for placements, and a quick overview of how to plan for rank. So just to quickly summarize, when you're signing someone up, are they a customer? They're a customer, they go deep in your organization. If they're a sharer, potentially maybe a builder, level two, level three. If they're a builder, level one. And I gave you the criteria on how to assess each one of those, where they're gonna go. I should gave you some tools to help you plan for your rank, whether it's elite, silver, platinum, presidential, diamond. Um, and I gave you some other tips and tricks in your back office. So when I post this on our Facebook page, feel free to post any questions you have and I will answer them as best as I can. Or of course, you can message me, um, email me, kim at purelifebalance.ca and I will get back to you. Or if you want to meet for a tea or coffee and pick my brain and let me help strategize, I would be more than happy to do that as well too. Hope you enjoyed it and hopefully there'll be more of these webinars coming soon.